Hey everyone, today I'm going to be talking about enantiostasis and estrine organisms. First off, what is enantiostasis? Enantiostasis is the regulation and maintenance of the metabolic and physiological functions in response to variations in the environment. So, um, it's just basically a response, and it can either be metabolic, which is, you know, chemical processes and whatnot, or physiological functions in response to variations in the environment. When I say variations in the environment, I mean stuff like, you know, concentration of salt levels and stuff like, you know, uh, the amount of pressure and whatnot. Okay, cool. Now I'm going to define some key terms that you need to know. Um, so first off is an estuary. Uh, an estuary is actually an environment where salt and water concentrations fluctuate regularly and multiple times on a daily basis. Now um, an example I can give of this is like in, in an estuary how these salt and water concentrations actually fluctuate is through tides which constantly um, change the salt concentrations throughout the place. So that's just a simple uh, you know way of knowing how it actually changes and that might even help you remember the term. Okay, awesome. Now, if these are changes which are multiple times on a daily basis, enantiostasis is needed in order to uh, allow the organism to actually survive in those type of places. Awesome. Now, what's og osmoregulation? That's something else that we need to know. And okay, let's see what Google says about it. Google says that osmoregulation is the maintenance of constant osmotic pressure in fluids of an organism by the control of water and salt concentrations. That's pretty much exactly what you need to know. Um, but just to simplify it a bit more, I'll put it into my own terms, which is um, it's the regular it's the maintenance of a constant optimal water and salt concentration in order to regulate osmotic pressure. Okay, sorry for going fast. I hope you're keeping up, but I need to keep these videos short. Okay, awesome. Here are some notes that uh, might help you guys. First off, organisms which move freely between the sea and rivers experience similar fluctuations in environmental uh, conditions and also have developed mechanisms of tolerance or avoidance. What I mean to say is basically that organisms which are, are constantly moving about in the sea and rivers, they experience um, similar fluctuations in environmental conditions and hence um, they have also developed mechanisms of tolerance or avoidance. Awesome. The next thing is that something that you really need to remember. Enantiostasis is not just for salt concentration fluctuations. It's also for things such as extreme pressures experienced by diving birds or, you know, it's, it's, it's many things that can, um, that, that enantiostasis can affect and, as, and is needed for in order to, for the survival of the organism. Not just salt concentrations. Okay. Let's move on. This is the first diagram that I've, I've drawn up. So um, it's just about antiostasis and how it uh, basically works. First off, suppose we have an organism living in environments with extreme fluctuations. Uh, well, okay, cool. Now, in an antiostasis, adaptations which allow for the organism to physiologically and metabolically cope with these reactions is present. So that's what an antiostasis is. It's, it's these adaptions which have allowed these organisms to um, physiologically and metabolically, uh, metabolic, uh, metabolically uh, cope with these reactions. Okay, cool. I'll move on to the next diagram. Okay, so in the next diagram, uh, it's just basically talking about estuary environments, and uh, this is basically it. Uh, if we have an estuary with low salt concentration, as I said before, a daily tide comes in and then the increase in salt concentration occurs. Alright, cool. So then what actually happens? Well, the higher osmotic pressure, uh, which is uh, in the cytoplasm and body fluids of the cells, causes the water to draw out of the cells and basically to reach osmotic balance. Well, if you think about it, we've learned about osmosis. This is pretty much what's happening here. It's through osmosis and um, estuary environments, if it had low salt concentration and then it turned into an increase and then the plant had to like equal it out, it's just the osmoregulation basically. Okay, so cool. Now we know that osmoregulation is absolutely necessary. So the biggest challenge for organisms living in estuaries is osmoregulation. Alright, no worries. So, we've got osmoconformers and osmoregulators. That is the two types. So, uh, just, just listing it out, we've got two types. So, the first one, osmoconformers. They're organisms that tolerate the changes in the environment by altering. So, keyword, 
altering the concentration of the internal solutes to match the external environment. Now, this is absolutely vital. This is what made me remember it 100%. Their, like, their body fluids conform to those of the um, environment. So conform, conform is another key term. Just, just keep that in mind. So, if something's informing, it's trying to like join. It's trying to fit in. Something which is uh, trying to assimilate. Okay, awesome. Now we know this. And then the other thing that you need to know is that their metabolism is able to tolerate the changes in salinity in their own body fluids and cells. So it's just um, it's by altering the con concentration of the internal solutes to match their external solutes. What we need to know is that they tolerate. They tolerate. There we go. They tolerate. Okay, awesome. Now we have osmoregulators. Now osmoregulators, just think of it as pretty much the opposite, where the organisms that avoid changes in the internal environment, and they have the ability to keep the solids at an optimal level. So they use, uh, you know, multiple things they can to keep it at an optimal le level. They, they maintain that balance inside their body in order to create an optimal environment. Okay, so they regulate solute concentrations within the body. Within the body, so that's the other key thing. See, see how I told you in the other one it was conform. See osmoregulators over here. They regulate solute concentration within the body. That's how you remember it. And obviously, there's two examples: one of a starfish for osmoconformers, and one of the stingray for osmoregulators. Anyways, that that pretty much concludes everything I have to say about anastasis and esterine organ organisms. I hope this helped.